Hello, my name is Dr. Hiroko Hagiwara. I'm Emeritus Professor of Osaka Prefecture University. In this short lecture, I will introduce a critical perspective on Araki Nobuyoshi's photography, which is now widely known to the world. Araki, born in 1940, has been productive since the 1970s. This presentation focuses on his later work, which centers on provocative images of bound and naked women. It seems difficult to differentiate the images from the crude exploitation and general degradation of women. But laboring Iraqi's photographs as sexist or non-artistic is not enough to explain why they are so widely accepted by the international art world. We will focus on the Iraqi industry, which has made efforts to produce hundreds of publications with the cautious management of its images and critical discourse. More than 400 publications and solo exhibitions at mainstream museums in Japan and abroad could not have been produced by Iraqi alone. Unfortunately, there will be no presentation of Iraqi's photographs in this lecture. He refuses to allow the use of the photographs by any overseas media, either for commercial or academic purposes. Iraqi's refusal may have something to do with the Western media's coverage of the former model's accusation of Iraqi's power harassment over the years. This is just the latest example of the Iraqi industry at work. Iraqi's photographs are available in museum archives and in libraries around the world for your own perusal. And strangely enough, you can also see quite a few of his works on the website of the Reflex Modern Art Gallery Amsterdam and the website of the Museum of Sex New York. After watching this lecture, you will understand that Iraqi's photography is a highly organized project, as well as how this project facilitates the expansion of the market for Iraqi's photographs and discourages the serious critique of them. In order to examine the functions of the Iraqi industry, which I define as the highly organized management of Iraqi's photographs and related discourse, I will address three issues. Number one, how Iraqi's photographs are highly receptive to the Western viewers orientalist gaze. Number two, organizational efforts to meticulously manage Iraqi's visual and discursive materials. And number three, function of the discourse of private photography and a recent accusation made by his former model. Number one, we have to pay attention to how the photographer's work is presented to the audience a series of photographs of bound, half-naked women in kimono, sometimes dangling, which dazzles Western eyes the most, is the main subject of criticism in the West. The images were initially produced to attract Western viewers. Western viewers orient this the readings have spurred the reception of Iraqi's work in the West. The term Orientalism was once used in the art world to describe a taste for the Orient in which the material culture and customs of other cultures not found in Western Europe were lumped together as the Orient and regarded as objects of admiration and curiosity. Edward Said in his 1978 book, Orientalism, argued that the Orientalism is both a European way of thinking about the Orient and a mode of domination. Since then, it has come to be discussed as a form of in intellectual domination that 
others and exotic sites is different cultures from the East and confines them to unchanging formula. The Iraqi industry is quite receptive to this Syrian place bias. Mario Kramer, for example, sees pictures of bondage as a reference to Japan's strictly disciplined society, and also as a reference to a, quote, liberal approach to sexuality in the personal sphere, quote, quote, this, that lies behind the strictly disciplined public sphere. Kramer said, quote, Iraqi photos are regarded as a liberalizing factor. In a sense, the young women take the liberty of having themselves photographed by Iraqi, quote, quote, this. In the imagination of Western reviewers, for women in a strictly disciplined society like Japan, where aspirations to sexual equality and the questioning of traditional gender roles are understood to be a fairly recent development, posing naked and vulnerable Iraqi is not seen as degrading, but rather as a defiant liberating act. This idea, however, is inaccurate and is an example of how Western viewers orientalist gaze was rather welcomed by Iraqi as proof of the photographer's international success. Number two, the argument here does not primarily concern how a Western audience has distorted the true image or meaning of the work, but rather how the Iraqi industry deploys the carefully organization of visual and discursive materials to promote smooth and profitable distribution on the art market. Austrian critic Christian Kravana's essay, Bring on the Little Japanese Girls, Iraqi in the West, was published in the catalog of Iraqi's exhibition in Vienna in 1997, and is a rare example of a challenging and serious critique of the photographer's work. That year, Iraqi's work, Tokyo Comedy, was shown at the Secession Building in Vienna as a part of the centennial anniversary of the secessionist movement. One of Kravana's main points of criticism is that Iraqi's images are exploitative and that the Western reception of them is based on an Orientalist con contradiction. He sees the images as commodified and as sexualized in the West. The cultural politics of the visual representation of the female body have been debated for decades. But as for Iraqi's images, exoneration through exoticization has diverted critical attention away from these problematic images and has forged an extraterritorial space for critique in which a photographer from the East enjoy enthusiastic acceptance. Kravana's essay was included in the German English version and omitted from the Japanese English version of the exhibition catalog. That critic Yasumi Akihito supports Kravana's essay because of its secessionist style of open and bold critique. But he also supports the publisher's opinion that the essay was not worth publishing in Japanese. The inclusion or omission of an essay reveals the subtle manipulation of meaning produced around Iraqi's work. How we see Iraqi's images is not left to our discretion, but cautiously directed and rooted beforehand by the Iraqi industry. Another incident underscores the corporate quality of his work. In 1996, he had a solo show, Shikijo Sexual Desire in Frankfurt. The catalog published to accompany the exhibition 
was followed by a second edition in 1997. While the first edition was an exact direct quarter of the exhibition, the second edition was altered and some images shown in Frankfurt were replaced with others. One of the images missing from the second edition is a formal portrait of ex-emperor Hirohito and the Empress. The portrait, which was exhibited along with images of naked women, was replaced by a picture of railroad tracks in the second edition. The Empress portrait was cautiously omitted to avoid attacks from ultra-nationalists. Meanwhile, the sensational violation of the female body becomes more an object of fantasy than ever. What should be and should not be shown was meticulously considered and swiftly rearranged when it came time for the publication to be distributed worldwide. This cautious arrangement must be the result of great organizational efforts. Number three, since the mid 1980s, the Rocky photographs have had a strong personal and private focus. In doing so, they are accepted as works by a sexually energetic, artistically challenging and prolific artist, which helps to expand their distribution. A personal cult of the artist Araki and the myth that his photographs reflect his real personal life are formed. We are told much about the photographer, not only through his pictures, but also through texts of different kinds produced along with the pictures. In the essays and interviews published along with the Rocket's photographs, the female model's confessional stories are noteworthy. Their stories are about their sexual awakening and liberation through posing for the photographer who says he sleeps with all his models. True or not, the models consent to exposure, bondage, and hanging is stressed. Although the confessions of many of the models can only be read in Japanese publications, in Iraqi's photographs themselves, Western viewers can visually read the meaning of the model's consent to be photographed in bondage news. What astonished and fascinated the Western viewers about Iraqi's work was the model's consent, which would not have been feasible in the West. The visual discourse of the Iraqi photographs, along with the moral stories, imply that women want to be photographed in this way. But in 2018, Kaudi, a model for Iraqi for 16 years, accused Iraqi of power harassment and labor exploitation on social media. She had no labor contract at all with Iraqi and was sometimes unpaid. Kaori has been photographed in bondage, nude many times and had an exhibition titled Kaori at the Reflex Gallery in 2005. This highlights the issue of power relations between artist and model. But critics who have weighed in on this issue miss the point. For example, Izawa Kotaro, who published a supportive reviews of Iraqi's work in the 1990s, says that women wanted to be photographed by Iraqi. According to Izawa, quote, the social climate surrounding these women was much tougher then than now. The constraints of family, school, and the workplace were tighter for these women. The decision to go naked was also the manifestation of a powerful desire to take control of their body and soul into their own hands. Quote closes. And quote again, in the 1990s, 
a lot of women approached Arati wanting to be photographed by him quite closely because they did not have the means to express themselves. Quote, Arati was for these women a convenient tool for taking some undoubtedly splendid self-portrait, quote, closes. However, continuous Izawa, times have changed, and if your women want to be photographed by Iraqi, making Iraqi's images, quote, simply anachronistic, quote, closes. Izawa's argument is wrong in many respects, but I would like to point out here that his argument is similar to Western Orientalist discourse in terms of the positioning of Japanese women, which itself was shaped by the Iraqi industry. Kaori's accusations have been controversial in Western media, and the New York Times reported on how the Iraqi exhibition at the Museum of Sex in 2018 included an exhibit about Kaori's comment. In Japan, it has not been discussed head on as an issue of power that photographers exert. The refusal to allow the use of the photographs in this lecture does not signal the end of the Iraqi industry, which has been scared off by Kauri's accusations, but rather the continuation of the manipulative organizational efforts of the Iraqi industry. Rather than pointing out the lag of the Me Too movement in Japan, Western viewers should critically reflect on their own Orientalist perceptions, which provided an extraterritorial space for nude bondage photographs from Asia and made it possible to hold the Iraqi exhibition in a prestigious mainstream museum and to publish a gorgeous collection of his works. Based on what we have covered on Iraqi's provocative images of bound and naked women, what do you think of the following questions? Did Japanese women tend to want to be models for nude bondage photos in the 1990s? Are uh, Iraqi's photos sexist or not? Would you say that these questions can be answered or are they wrong questions? More critical questions are as follows. Why is the personal quality of Iraqi's photograph stressed? How does the entirety of Iraqi's work, including his photographs and models, stories, function to engage the viewer's gaze? In the exhibition and publication of Iraqi's photographs, how does the Iraqi industry wield power over which works are shown and how they are shown. If you pay attention to how the photographs are accompanied by various manipulated stories, such as private photos and the model's consent, which guide the viewer's gaze, you will understand how the Iraqi industry works. Now we know that the Iraqi industry sometimes refuses to show his photographs. Let's sum up what we have learned about how to see Iraqi Nobuyoshi's later work. If we take Iraqi's work to include not only what is shown in the photographs, but also the stories presented in related media, it is better to think of Iraqi as the product of an industry rather than an in individual photographer. The Iraqi industry is an organized project of private photography that mobilizes and circulates all kinds of media, including not only photographs, but also essays that tell of Iraqi sex life and his models confessions of sexual awakening. When viewed in this way, it is clear how strategically his work engages the viewer's gaze. 
Western viewers think they hold the key to understanding Japanese society and they repeat the same old Orientalist critique. Their Orientalist readings have spurred the Western reception of Araki's work, while an Orientalist reading of Araki's work has been accepted as proof of Araki's success. A serious critique, such as Christian Kubranias, was cautiously omitted from the Japanese edition of the exhibition catalog. We also learned about the careful and systematic handling of the Iraqi industry as evidenced by the fact that the portrait of the emperor was replaced by a photograph of railroad tracks for the fear of being attacked by far right nationalists. On the other hand, the sensational photographs of the female body were published as object of fantasy without any program. I propose the Iraqi industry as a conceptual tool to discuss the entirety of Iraqi's work as it is exhibited and distributed through such organizational effort. Thinking of Iraqi as an industry allows for an effective analysis of its distribution, reception, criticism, and the subsequent production of his work. In conclusion, I leave you with the following questions. Why is it that simply laboring a photograph as sexist or not, bad or good, is not productive as criticism? How do Western viewers overcome their orientalist desire to be bewitched by liberation through bondage and nudity when the models come out to negate the narrative of their consent and accuse the photographer of exploitation. Permission to use Iraqi's photographic works in this lecture was not granted. However, as Maggie Masters' lecture shows, unfortunately, the scenes exhibited at the Museum of Sex are copyrighted by the museum and are therefore exempt from the control of the Iraqi industry. Based on the experience of this lecture, what can we learn about the rights of photographers and the development of criticism? If you want to pursue this further, please refer to the list of references at the end. Thank you very much for listening. Mm -hmm.